I'm Nicole DeVette, veterinarian, certified herbalist, food therapist, and acupuncturist for pets. I'm here to talk to you about highly processed versus minimally processed diets for dogs. In the last video, we compared two separate dog foods, each designed for large breed adult dogs. One formula was grain free and the other contained several grains. So we looked at the difference before these are processed, but the reality is they both get processed down into kibble, which end up looking very similar to one another. In this video, we're gonna talk more about processed food for people and for pets, as well as dispel some of the myths regarding cooked and raw diets. I think you'll find they're not as scary as you think. So let's get started. recommended by veterinarians. So mostly grain, a little bit of chicken meal, and a little bit of vegetables, and also a multivitamin to balance it out. This is the food that we would recommend here in our office. So again, chicken, vegetables, fruit, a little bit of flaxseed, and a multivitamin. If I wanna keep my animals healthy, I don't think we can deny the fact that one may cause greater health than the other. One may be more inflammatory than the other. So I don't think these two foods are equal. And so what we have done in our practice is we've chosen to use diets that are using more of this as ingredients as opposed to this. Um, I wanna talk about food for people. So lately, some of these grain-free videos that I've been seeing, um, they bother me so much because they tell us that we shouldn't use our own human principles um, for animals. And I totally disagree. We have come to learn over the last decade or so that we have to be careful. We have to read ingredients. We have to be careful about what we put in our bodies. And we can't just trust everything on the shelf. Why would we not use those same principles in our, in our animals? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I wanted to just use a really quick example of what we do in people um, to think about that. So this is a, uh, a snack that you will find on my shelf at home, right? Veggie straws. I feel uh, like I'm doing a better job um, eating this than, than some other junk foods out there, right? Because there's vegetables in it. And so when you read on the label what vegetables are in it, it's potato, spinach, and tomato. So when we take um, the ingredients that are supposed to be in here in this processed snack and we put it in a bowl, <laughs> what do we think will be healthier for us? So it seems pretty obvious to me, right? So if you're trying to stay healthy, either one might do. If you're trying to get healthy, meaning that you already have health problems, um, the main ones of which we would consider cancer or autoimmune disease, which one do we think is gonna get us out of that state of disease? I think the, op, uh, the answer is very obvious. Let's talk again about processed food versus non-processed food. I wanna dispel some of the fears around table scraps or home-cooked meals. So again, when we have our kibble, the difference between kibble and this is whole food. So this is similar to a diet that we would recommend here in our hospital. This is an example of a home cooked diet um, that was formulated by veterinary nutritionists to be balanced. It's got chicken, sweet potato, broccoli, and oils in it, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the same thing the pet food companies do. I'm gonna add my multivitamin in. And that is my well-balanced home cooked meal for my dog. So what we do in our hospital to make things easy is we throw everything in a crock pot. We cook it up for them. So this is an example. We literally cooked this in the crock pot in our office yesterday of a crock pot meal for dogs. It looks amazing, right? So this is a fully balanced um, formula for my dogs um, who eat this way. Now look at that, the difference of this and this. What kind of health can I expect from a dog eating this regularly to a dog eating this? Now, what I tell my patients and my clients here um, is that you don't have to be perfect. I don't eat perfectly in my house. I try to eat the best I can, but I do keep some kibble at my house, right? So what I tell people is kibble is not necessarily health food. It's convenient. 
Kibble is convenient, and that's how we should look at it. So it is convenient. It's, you know, I'm busy. I have children and animals. I have a business to run. And so I keep some kibble around. Now, which kibble do I keep? Obviously, I'm keeping around the kibble made from the better ingredients, so the ingredients that I see as being healthier. Um, but then they eat like this most of the time. And so I've got some fluctuation there in what I can do in my house and feeling like the majority of their diet is coming from food like this. My animals right now have no health conditions. Um, two of them came to me with major health conditions and no longer have anything wrong with them. Um, and the other two came to me healthy and I'm keeping them that way, eating this, um, feeding them this way. Don't have time, energy, or money to sit and home cook for your animals? It's okay. Um, what I tell my clients who have really sick animals, severe allergies, cancer, severe autoimmune disease, they are really trying to save their animals' lives. The home cooking really does pay off, and we have the knowledge here to do it well. So don't be afraid of that. Um, but a lot of people don't have time or money for that, and, and I think that's okay. So no pressure to do everything perfect, right? None of us are perfect. So um, one of the foods I wanted to share with you um, that we use that works on a lot of these same principles, it's minimally processed, which means it is a freeze-dried raw food. I want to read for you the ingredient list on here. Chicken, potatoes, flax, carrots, celery, apples, blueberries, cranberries, garlic, multivitamin. That's it. So it's the same kind of thing. And what we do with some of these foods, and I'm not going to measure it today, but normally you would measure it. What you do, you can measure it and pour it into a bowl. like a cereal okay so it's not heated and pressurized like the kibble is okay and what you do is you're gonna mix water into it at a 50 50 ratio and it makes a little gruel up now not everybody loves the consistency of this so I do have some patients who just don't like the cereal texture and I think that's okay but I just want to give you another example of a um, you know, commercially prepared diet for dogs that I would consider consistent with and equal to a homemade diet. It's also well balanced, which means that you can expect your dog is getting all of the nutrients it needs right here in one bag. So we let it sit for a few minutes and this is what it makes. Very nutritious meal for dogs. And it's in smaller amounts, but it does very much resemble the ingredients in the kibble that I first shared with you, the grain-free kibble. So that's a food that we love. Now, I did say raw, so I want to dispel some of the fears around raw food. So again, a lot of the information that's going around right now in this, what I call the great grain-free food debate, um, talks about raw food really negatively. And I think that's coming from people who have no experience with raw food. So it's really easy to say um, there's all these things wrong with that, but this is coming from people who have never really used it. So again, I'm using kibble, I'm using home-cooked foods, I'm using raw foods, canned foods, all different things. So I've seen it all. Um, and that's the perspective that I'm coming from, not just the perspective of I do this one thing and then I think everything else is wrong. So um, what I see mostly is very disturbing about raw food. Let me show you. So when I'm watching some things online right now about this grain-free debate and the food debate and all these things, um, when I'm seeing people talk about with raw food, is what I'm gonna show you. And you can tell by the look on my face that I'm really uncomfortable even having anything to do with this. Um, it's gross, but this is what people think. So what I'm seeing, ugh, sorry, I'm even having a hard time with this. So when people are talking about, um, you know, how wrong it is to feed raw food um, to dogs and cats, they're taking this disgusting raw food from the grocery store and plopping it in a bowl. And, um, and saying that, you know, raw foods are dangerous for your pets. Well, of course it is, it's also disgusting. So this 
is not what holistic vets mean by raw food. So I do have a very small number of patients. So I have 11,000 patients here and there is maybe a handful that are feeding raw food this way. And it's not because I recommended it. It's because that's what they want to do. And they don't really want to hear what I have to say about changing over to a commercially prepared raw diet. So the difference is the commercially prepared raw diets for dogs are preserved more naturally. So they're meant to be fed raw. This is not meant to be fed raw. So this is, is coming from the grocery store and it's prepared in a way in which they're expecting that you cook it so that you cook off the bacteria. And it's just night and day different. It's also, it's disgusting. So, and it's also not balanced. So we're not talking about a balanced formula just to do raw meat. This needs carbohydrates, it needs fats, it needs multivitamin, it needs minerals, all of those things. And so um, what I hate seeing is people who know nothing about raw food making people feel like this is what raw food is and that this is what some of us herby vets are, are recommending and it's just not true. So, um, you know, again, when we're doing raw diets, we are generally recommending that they're doing a raw diet that is meant to be fed raw. Again, I just showed you one of our favorites. It's a dehydrated or we love freeze-dried raw foods. They also make frozen raw foods. And so you maybe have seen some studies where they have um, tested some of the raw foods for dogs and found bacteria on them. The problem is in the studies that I've seen at least, that food sits out for several hours before they test it. And that's not how it's meant to be fed. So of course, but these are again, this information is coming from people who have never done it. They just don't know. And so you really can't listen to them about raw foods, can you? So this is an example of a brand of raw food that we like. Um, I'm gonna pour it out, although they recommend that you scoop it out and measure it. But we pour it out of the bowl, so I don't, I don't need gloves or anything. It goes back into the freezer for the next meal. And then this thaws out within a few minutes. So it's meant to be set on the counter for about 10 minutes until it thaws. And then it's meant to be fed um, to your pets. Now again, this formula in particular is well balanced. It has everything that your dog needs for adequate nutrition, including the multivitamin and the minerals. So this would sit out for about 10 minutes and you feed it to your dog. So when you're looking at studies for raw food, a lot of those things, this food has been sitting out for 12 hours. Well, how many of you would leave meat or anything else sitting out on your counter for 12 hours in the sun and expect to eat it and be healthy? You wouldn't. So why are we expecting that for our dogs too? So again, I think some of this information is really misleading and it's coming from a community of people who really don't have any experience with it. The fact that there's so much debate right now, it's really intense about this grain-free thing, shows me, one, what I'm hearing from my veterinary community is they feel so strongly like you should avoid any food that's outside of those three brands of, of what the veterinarians are taught to use. The reason there's such a debate is because there's lots of people out there on the other side that feel better about feeding uh, their pets outside of those three brands. And I would agree with you. We don't carry one formula from one of those companies here. We have what I call a holistic variety uh, that matches those formulas. So what we have done is found things that we think have better processing or minimally, minimal processing and better ingredients that give us the same results as those formulas that I was taught in school. And so that's it. So what I wanna tell you is there are options. So if you are feeding grain-free food, don't be afraid. Go to the FDA report itself and see that there were only 500 dogs in this study and there is inconclusive results. So there's seven, 77 million animals in our country and only 500 of them were found to maybe have a problem. So um, it kind of blows my mind that this has just gotten so big and maybe it's just time to start thinking about nutrition, you know? So we're only, you're only hearing one side of it from my community, unfortunately, but there's this whole other side that believes a whole other set of values. Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram as Nicole DeVette, also www.nicoledevette.com. I also have a one hour webinar um, where I talk more in depth about this FDA report um, on grain-free foods and the link to heart disease, and also kind of reviews some of these same principles. 
Um, I'd love for you to join me on that if you are looking for more in-depth information on this topic. So thank you for your time. Um, thank you for listening to A Different Perspective. I hope